Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this awesome, awesome, awesome time in your presence, Lord. We thank you for the, thank you for the, your glory in this place. We thank you for your glory, your glory in us, Lord. We thank you for that revelation to go deeper, to trust more, to know who you are, to know who we are, to know who you are in us, and to know who we are in you, Lord. We just thank you for that spirit of wisdom and revelation to be released in this place today. And we, we receive it now by faith in Jesus' name. Woo! Who is this king of glory? <laughs> Who is this king of glory? Psalms 24 asks that question. Who is this king of glory? He's our savior. That's who. Amen. That's who. That's who this king of glory is we're talking about this morning. Jesus. He's the king of glory. He's the king of glory, and he is in us. Amen? Amen. He is in us, and we are in him. You know, Psalms 24 talks about open up the gates and, and let the king in. Yes. We got to open up the gates and let the king out. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We got to open up the gates and let the king out, because he's already in us now. Yes. The, the king came. I, I know the king of glory is here because you're here. And if you're born again, he's in you. You bring him with you wherever you go. Wow. Praise the Lord. And uh, when we carry that king of glory, it's like Psalms 24, but it's open up the gates and let the king out. Let the king out. Yes. Let the king out in Jesus' name. This morning, that's what we're going to talk about. Ah, that's actually the name of this sermon. Praise the Lord. Let the king out. Woo. Luke, uh, Luke 4, uh, starting in verse 18. I'm, I'm reading out of the NIV right now. The spirit of the Lord is on me, thank you, Jesus, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And that poor, you know, we're, not, we're, we're talking about good news to the poor. We're not talking about people that are just the people in poverty need to hear the gospel. We're talking about poor, like you're, there's something missing. Amen. And if you've never heard the gospel, there's something missing. So, so he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the lord's favor wow i'm just gonna i'm gonna stop there and jesus was standing on the word of god and he was he was in his hometown and he was declaring the anointing on his life that's what he was doing he was declaring god's word he was coming into agreement with the word of god amen that's what jesus was doing he's and he's taking he's he's stepping up in faith and he's making a bold declaration and what was their response they wanted to kill him. <laughs> Sometimes when we take a, uh, man, I just, I, I was, I, this is, I've been seeing people going through this and, and I should be surprised because the Lord was talking to me about people going through it and then I see it and then it's like, woof. You know, when we, sometimes when we like get a revelation, we got, ah, healing. Man, God wants to heal people. Jesus is still the healer. And we're like, I got to tell my friends and family about this. And they're like, you're trying to make people feel bad. This is a slap in the face to all the sick people out there. Yeah, ah, we're just helping somebody with this today. Like, or not today, but um, just the last couple of days. It's like, whoa. You know, it, and that, I, I remember we, we went through some things like that too with, you know, like, wow, you know, Jesus said, let, let, be healed according to your faith. We just have to have faith that, that Jesus is, are you saying the healing is that, that, that this isn't God's will for me to be sick? Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm, 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 I believe the word, you know. I'm, I, I'm not going to let the teachings of man make God's word no effect in my life anymore. God heals everybody. Jesus is perfect theology. He's the exact representation of the Father. Jesus never went around laying hands on people and making them sick. He only went around healing people. He only went around bringing deliverance. He never, he never killed anybody. He never cast devils into people. Amen. He only brought, he, he did what he said he was going to do according to God's word in Luke chapter 4. He proclaimed the favor of God. Yes. Man, he proclaimed the favor of God. Now we're entering into the favor time. This is the favor of God. You know, Adam and Eve, were, the whole world was created for man. God created the world and gave it to mankind. He's like, here you go. Here's your, have dominion. Be fruitful and multiply. Genesis chapter 1. And then through, through disobedience and sin, man gave it back. Gave, or not gave it back, but gave it to the devil. They, I don't want to even surrendered it. And then Jesus used Abraham, or, or, or the father used Abraham to bring back the blessing, the covenant blessing. Uh, and it was, a ble it was a covenant blessing. It was a, a covenant of blessing. It wasn't like, 
the law was the law was a do good get good the blessing of abraham was before the law and it was received by faith it was get good by faith okay it was like i'm a good god i'm gonna treat you good abraham why because i chose to because i because i because you're gonna trust me i just need somebody to trust me what did abraham do to deserve the blessing absolutely nothing he was out there worshiping moons and doing weird stuff you know because everybody else was and then god and then he also hear god and god's voice comes to him and he says the, the real God speaks to him. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. All I need you to do is trust me. Leave your family behind. Leave this, leave this land and come into the place where I've called you, and I'm going to release the blessing over your life. So God reestablishes the blessing with mankind through Abraham, and then, and then, he, re then he brings it out even further. Actually, I'm going to read you some verses. We love the Bible. It's so powerful. We love the Bible. We love, man, we love the word. Genesis, Genesis 12, verse 1, the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's house to the land I show you. And he says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Who's doing, the, who's doing this? God's doing it. What is Abraham's part? He's trusting. And you will be a blessing. Why? Wow, he's blessing Abraham so he can be a blessing. He said, I will bless those who bless you. Okay, so this is, listen to this. This, this blessing is for us today. All right, I'm going to go through this and, and, and make this a little bit clear, but just receive it by faith right now and so it will make more sense to you. So you know what? I'm talking about you today. So when people bless you, even unbelievers, they're, they're stepping into the blessing because God's covenant is they're going to get blessed by association with you. All right? Man, you are a walking blessing dispenser. Okay? All people have to do is be nice to you, and all of a sudden they get in favor back at them. They don't even know, oh, I don't even know. They don't even know what's going on. But we know what's going on, amen, because we got the word. Okay, so he says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. The expectation is not the cursing. The expectation is the blessing, because God's putting this blessing on us so that everybody can be blessed through us. Everybody. Everybody is going to hear the good news, the full gospel. Everybody is going to heal, heal, get healed. Everybody is going to get delivered. Everybody is going to receive abundance. That's the expectation of God. That's the, that's the promise of this blessing. Now, so he does it with Abraham. And then, then in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 8, he extends it. He extends it to the whole people. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 8, 17, where he had already done, but he's, like, he's, he's laying it out clearly. He's, and he's speaking to Israel, and he's saying, You may say to yourself, My power and my strength has produced wealth for me. But he says, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth so that he can confirm his covenant with who? With Abraham. Amen. That's <laughs> what's going on here. Now, and then we can jump into Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 13. It, it was not through the law that Abraham, I'm, I'm jumping into Romans chapter 4, I believe I'm reading on the NIV um, translation, and I'm, uh, verse 13. Uh, it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Abraham didn't receive this by any other means. For if those who depend on the law uh, are, are, are heirs, faith, by, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless. Man, jumping down to 16. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. Not only those of the law, but those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he, he believed. So Abraham believed God. That's how this came to him. Now, Jesus, Jesus was able to bring this covenant blessing into the new covenant. So by faith in Christ, we step into this blessing, this favor of God. We step into this. And now in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. NIV, I'm trying to slow it down a little bit because I'm super excited. Man, I'm so excited. Can anybody tell I'm excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, again, out of the NIV translation. Oh, Right? And I, am I, or did I do that? Berean? I mean, I got that. Okay, that one, NIV. Okay. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written, cursed is anyone who hangs on a, on a pole. He redeemed us in order that he, the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Ah, so it is by faith that we receive the Spirit. By faith. Man, you receive the Spirit inside of you. 
You have the spirit of Jesus Christ inside of you. You have the king of glory inside of you. You carry the, you know, if I brought the Ark of the Covenant in here, and first of all, uh, if I brought the Ark of the Covenant, it would be of major archaeological significance because I think they're looking for it right now and they think they found it. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, they think they found the Ark of the Covenant. But you can imagine if we had the Ark of the Covenant here and put all the archaeological things aside, we'd be like, oh, it's the Ark of the Covenant. There's the Spirit of God in there. You know, don't touch it, you know, right? We'd be scared. We would want to, well, we know we're in the New Covenant, but let's not take any chances. Gary, you touch it first, you know. <laughs> so we <laughs> We'll send, we'll send the man with the most faith in first to touch the ark. I'll see what happened. You know, peek inside there. See what's in there. Is there any manna? I want to know, but I don't want to know that bad. You know. But no, but here's the deal. Like now, you're the ark of the new covenant. Man, we got to peek inside of here. You know, We got to peek inside of here. This is the, the rod of the budding rod, man. It's right here. All the miracles, the testimonies, they're all in here. We'll open up the gate and let the king of glory out. Man, we've been promised his glory. Jesus said this. Jesus said this in John John 17. ESV. This is what Jesus said. Sanctify them. I'm at verse 17. 17, 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And this is Jesus talking to the Father. As you sent me into this world, so I have sent them into this world. How did he send them? He sent, Jesus got sent, he got sent with the anointing. He got, uh, he was anointed to reveal the Father. He was anointed to declare the good news. He was anointed to bring freedom to the captives. He was anointed to bring sight to the blind. He was anointed to to not only proclaim the favor of the Lord, but to demonstrate the favor of the Lord. So that's how he's sending us out, okay? So he's sending, and for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only. He's talking about the guys in front of him. But I ask for all those who will believe in me through their word. That's me, that's you, that's everybody who believes, okay? That they will be one. Now listen to this. This is super significant. Sometimes we read this stuff too fast, and so I'm going to slide on. Sometimes we read this stuff too fast. Listen to what he's saying here. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus, this is Jesus speaking to the Father. That they may be one. We're one, okay? Just as you, Father, Jesus is saying to the Father, just as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, they are also, will, may be in us. Okay? We're in them. We're, we're in, like Jesus is in the Father, are in the Godhead. Like we're, we're in the Godhead. Okay, that's what he's saying. He's like, well, they're in us. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. Wow. I know. Wow. Isaiah 42, verse 8 says, I am, the Lord, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another. Oh, was, is the Lord breaking his word? No, he's not, because he's bringing us in. Okay, he's bringing us in. God's not giving his glory away. He's bringing us into him. That's how we get to share in the glory. He's bringing us into him. He's not giving his, way to, his glory away, but we're coming into the glory. Because we're in him now. Yeah. Amen. We're in him. The glory you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. In them, in, uh, I in them, Jesus in, in me, and in you, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you have sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. Wow. Faith comes through a revelation of identity. The more confident you are in your identity in Christ, the more confident you become in his word about you. If you believe what he is saying here, and, it, and, it, and, the, and you receive it with faith, and you start to understand it deeper. We all, we all came in with a level of understanding, but there's even more. Amen? There's even greater. Greater. The, the, as the faith in who God is, who, who the Father is, who Jesus is, how completely 
true his word is, how you are in him, and he is in you. He has given us his glory, because we, we, the king of glory is in us. Amen. The king of glory is in us. Whew. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> when... When he made us his righteousness, God said, God, the word says, we have been made the righteousness of Christ, okay? We have been made, right? He became a curse for us so we could be, see what we just read there. You know? um, how else could he be inside of us? I mean, this is literal truth. How else could the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus, how could, the, how could God, how could this holy God indwell us if he hadn't already, if he hadn't done that, when we, be, when we became born again, when we became born again, it was says, we became born again, well, 1 Peter 1.23 says, becoming born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. When the word of God came, you became born again. Amen. You got you gotta, the word of God, the, the, the living word of God, entered into your spirit and conception took place. Okay? <laughs> you, became, you became a new creation. Something that didn't exist before. Not like I used to be an old pair of tennis shoes and now I'm a new pair of tennis shoes. You're like a new creation. Okay? You, you, you've become something new. You, you have the... You have... <laughs> You have, the, you, have the blood, you have the blood of Jesus in your veins, and you have the DNA of God in your heart, okay? Yes. You've become a new creation. You, you are royalty now, Amen. all right? Yeah, yeah. You are royalty. Yeah. Yes. You are royalty. Scripture says you are a king and a priest, yes. all right? A lot of times we don't act that way because we don't believe it. Man, why, why, why did he make you a king and a priest? Because he needs you to be, he needs you to know that you're a king so that you can rule like a king. Yeah. You can speak like a king. Kings don't curse people. They don't curse themselves. They don't curse their spouses. They don't curse their families. They don't, ah, oh, this day is not any good. Well, when the king says it, something's going to happen because they got authority coming out of their mouth. Okay. We, last week, we talked about having a negativity fast. Like, don't, don't say any negative words about yourself. If you catch yourself saying something like, I'm too old for this. Man, you may have, we may have forgot about that. The Holy Spirit's going to remind you and say, no, you're not. Who says you're too old? <laughs> not me. God says, we say, you may say you're too old, but I don't say you're too old. Wow. The Word of God doesn't say you're too old. I mean, if you really look at the word of God, you might get a, I can understand getting the impression that you might be too young. Well, I'm not even 80 yet, Lord. <laughs> and you're calling me to, to do something? Sh show me the precedent on that. Well, I guess Jesus, okay. We, uh, but, you know, look at a lot of these guys. They didn't start doing stuff until they were old. They, we're too old. No, no, no. Don't curse yourself. You're a king. Your words have power. You've been given dominion. You carry the king of glory in you. Yes. When you go around cursing yourself, speaking negative things about yourself, I'm like, well, I don't really believe it. I'm just saying, no, you're not just talking anymore. You got to understand the authority that, that's in you, yes. you know? And when we're believing, when we receive something by faith, and then we go out the door and we start speaking the negative, the opposite, we're just, we're just canceling out those seeds. We're canceling out the faith that was already released. We need to understand our, our supernatural Authority. We need to understand who get a revelation of royalty in us, Re revelation of being a, a son or a daughter, a, a child of the king. If you're a child of the king, that means you're a royal heir. Scripture says you are co-heir with Christ. Right. You are a co-heir with Christ. That's who you are. That's, that's who he says you are. If you believe anything contrary to that, you're not believing. You're believing a lie. You're a co-heir with Christ. And he wants you to rule and reign with him. Okay? You, are, okay, you are seated with him right now in heavenly places, and he is seated with you right now in your seat. Amen. Okay? He has already put you up there, and he put himself in you so that he can work through you. Amen. But he needs your cooperation. Yes. 
Okay, he's not going to force you. He's not going to force you into this stuff. So we're moving corporately from information, I'm teaching you something really good, to revelation, all right? And I can see it. The Lord spoke this to me, and I see it today. Like sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm up here and I'm saying something, and I can say, hey, that light bulb went on. And there's another light bulb over there. And Melissa's light bulb is always on because she's so beautiful. And it's, you know. and I'm like, man, I look around here, and it's like the lights are on. Amen? The lights are on. I see it. We were moving from a place of just get, you're getting some good information, but now you're getting this revelation. You're like, ah. And sometimes you receive revelation, you're like, I don't even know what I just heard, but I felt something shift in me. It's the spirit of this the spirit of the Lord. He's working in you. He's you know, and he you may hear something today that you don't even remember you heard, but the Holy Spirit's gonna bring it back to remembrance. And it, and it's not that you didn't already know it because the word is already in you. But when you hear it, you read it, you hear it from me. You get it? Ah, I don't know what that meant. Three days later, the Holy Spirit says the same thing. And you're like, whoa, where did I hear that before? What's well, in the word? You're not too old. You're not too old. Kurt was just sharing with me. He was like, man, I was doing something all of a sudden. I said, oh, man, I'm too old for this. And the Holy Spirit said, who says that? Oh, <laughs> the Lord spoke out. Who says, oh, I guess that was me, Lord. <laughs> that wasn't me. Remember that. Oh, okay, you know, you're not too old. That's the thing. But, the, but it's like revelation is coming out. Revelation is being received. You receive the word by faith. Faith, the very nature of faith has to take you beyond the place of your previous experience, yes. okay? It has to, has to stretch you beyond what, you've know, what you know and where you've gone. It has to, it has, Abraham's got called out to go somewhere else so the Lord could bless him. Faith is calling you out right now to believe for greater things. Believe for more. Believe for more. All right, now, so Jesus, he's in his hometown. He speaks that with those words out. Mm. Wow. Luke chapter 4, they want to kill him. That's what they try to do. What a great response. I'm launching a ministry. Lord, I'm going to launch a ministry. Let's do it. Wow, that was a bad message. Not only did they, not, not only was there a small offering, but they actually tried to kill me, Lord. This is, not, this is not what we were looking for. So what does Jesus do? He just, you know, he miracle happened. Just, nothing, nobody touches him. Continues on. Um, oh, I got to grab this real quick here. So he actually comes back. He comes back. And when I'm writing on, I'm like writing in tongues. My notes are written in tongues. I, wish, I don't have time for interpretation. Like, I don't know what this says, but it was good. I remember. It was, you know, like it was really good. I'm like, oh, 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 wow, this is so good, Lord. Uh, uh, glad, glad I took these notes so I can say, wow, what was that? Man, I was in a spirit. All right, so, and, so, this is, so he... he is in Nazareth, and this is Luke chapter 4. He speaks those words out, and then he goes about his ministry, and then you'll see um, he comes back. You know, in Mark chapter 6, he comes back to Nazareth. And again, um, they don't receive him with faith. But you've got to understand, between, between the time that Jesus was in his hometown to the time that he came back to his hometown, there was a tremendous amount of ministry Tremendous amount of ministry. When you put the things in chronological order, you'll see, I mean, people are getting healed. He's ministering to multitudes. People, he's healing everybody that was present. Uh, John the Baptist is, you know, is, is, his disciples are getting questions answered. Uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood is healed. Jairus' daughter is raised from the dead. So then all this stuff happens. Jesus goes back to his hometown. Mark chapter 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. This is the second time. In, this is the second time. Major ministry, major miracles, major signs in being of confirmation. He preaches in the Sabbath, and it says, Many who heard him were amazed. They say, Where did this man get these things? What, what's this wisdom that he's been given? What about, the, what about these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't these his sisters here? And they took offense at him. Again, again, they're even saying, wow, how can he do these miracles? Again, they're rejecting, they're rejecting the message, Reje rejecting. And I believe Jesus had an opportunity to be disappointed. Well, wow, again, man. You know, and Jesus it says, um, and Jesus said to them, 
a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his relatives and in his, in, in his home. So now, um, Jesus stands on the word, faces the opportunity, of, you know, disappointment. You know, I want to be clear about disappointment. Sometimes for me, I have a, like this thing about disappointment. I don't even want to, I don't even want to recognize disappointment. Well, the reality, all disappointment is, is, you know, think about it. You have an appointment with something and it gets dissed. Like it doesn't happen. You know, I have a, I have a goal. I have an expectation. I, I, we were playing Uno the other night. Evo, my six-year-old daughter, beat all of us twice in a row. Like legitimately, I was a little disappointed. I was, I was you know, but I didn't get this. You know, there's a difference between disappointment and discouragement. Okay, there's a difference between disappointment and discouragement. I just did a teaching called "Disarming Disappointment." We're going to be releasing it soon. You can disarm disappointment because you know it's coming. Okay, and Jesus sets his he lets his disciples know. Okay, so then it says he could do, he could do he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. In the same verse, it says, so verse 6 continues. It says, he was amazed at their lack of faith. The second part of the verse is, then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. How did Jesus know he had to overcome the lack of faith? By continuing to preach the word. Right. What was the first thing he said? He, I'm anointed to preach. Right. Okay? So he says, I am, the word needs to come. They need to hear it. I'm not discouraged. I'm going to keep going. Right. All right? And then, to, <laughs> and then he expands the ministry. He calls his 12. He says, guys, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do the same thing I'm doing. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to get rejected too. And he tells them. He prepares them for rejection. He says, this is what, you know, if, if verse 11, if some place doesn't welcome you, this is how you handle it. Okay? We don't have to be scared of disappointment. You guys, I get that. We don't have to be scared of disappointment. We need to understand that man, when disappointment comes, I just know what to do with it. Man, disappointment is the... The goal, the objective that I had, the, 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 the expectations I had didn't get met in my time frame. Delay is not disaster. Delay means it's just delayed. There's a delay going on here. I got to understand. Wow, okay, this didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen, but it's still going to happen. I believe Jesus had a, you know, he said he was, he said he was actually dismayed by the, it was, he, was, he was amazed by the lack of faith. He didn't expect that to happen. He expected, he expected more to happen. But what did he do? He kept teaching. He kept preaching. He commissioned the others, and he prepared them. Hey, guess what? You're going to run into some things. People may not receive you. This is how you handle it. And what, what was the end result? They went out and preached the word and people, that people should repent. They drove out many demons, anointed many sick people with oil, and healed them. That's how Jesus handled disappointment. Discour the opportunity to be discouraged? Nope. He said, we're just going to press in. We're going to keep going. We're going to stand on the word. We're going to go forth and do it. So now you got to see, what he commissioned them to do, it's the same thing he's commissioned us to do. The same thing. Except now, we've got, we, we actually carry the glory of the Lord inside of us. We carry this glory inside of us. And, and, and with, when, he, when he said, when he sent them out, I don't really have time to really get into this, but one thing he didn't really, I don't believe he commissioned them to do in that moment as you study that passage of scripture. He didn't tell them to go out and proclaim the Lord's favor. He didn't tell them to go out and proclaim the blessing because he hadn't taken back dominion yet. All right? He has taken back dominion now. Okay? We, we are commissioned wherever we go. We carry the king of glory. We are, we are, we are ambassadors of heaven. Yes. We are ambassadors of heaven. We are kings and priests. What comes out of our mouth has authority to change the atmosphere. Yes. What comes out of our mouth affects not only those that are, can hear it, but it affects the supernatural realm. Every, we, we have that level of authority now. That's what the word says. We carry Jesus. We have the, the authority of the king of kings in us. And if we don't live up to the king and priest that he's called us to be, he can't do much unfortunately. That's the truth. That's the truth. Now, he sent us out. He sent us out now. We, we've been born again with the incorruptible seed. We have supernatural DNA. Amen? Amen? We have supernatural DNA. We are anointed for this. We carry the king of glory inside of us. When we go out, we need to believe who we are, and we need to believe what we've been commissioned to do. All right, when, when, we get a, when we get this grip on our identity, man, this is who I am. Right. I'm a child of God. 
I am, I am royalty. I carry the king of glory in me. My words are powerful. What I say matters. I can't afford to get discouraged because I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm going to stand in faith and I'm going to believe this stuff. And if it doesn't manifest in my time frame, praise the Lord anyway. Hallelujah. I got an opportunity to grow my faith. Amen. I got an opportunity to strengthen, be strengthened. I got an, uh, disappointment doesn't have to lead to discouragement. Disappointment can lead to encouragement. Amen. Especially when you're in a place like this and you're hanging out with like-minded brothers and sisters who are going to encourage you to, st- to continue and to persevere and to move forward. And to see that manifestation realized. And as we grow in a revelation of who we are, we're going to begin to see the manifestation of the promises of God with increasing, increasing fullness, increasing regularity. And it's going to, it's going to happen. This is the promise of Scripture. So now as we go through this, we have to understand, one, it's time to let the king out. Yes. It's time to let the king out. The, the, the royal, your royal decree as who you are, your identity as a, as a royal heir, co-heir with Christ, and the king of glory that is in you. He is in you, and he wants to come out. Amen. He is in you, and he wants to come out because people need to know the goodness of God in their life. You need to know the goodness of God in your life. He sees you as he sees Jesus. He loves you as he loves Jesus. That's what he told us in John 17. I know sometimes when I even, when I'm reading, when I say it out loud, I'm like, ooh, it almost makes me go, but it's the truth. I gotta, I gotta start, I gotta keep confessing this and believing it until it gets in me. And I say, wow, that's how you see me. If I don't see me the way Jesus sees me, I got a problem. (laughs) There's, you know, there's a problem and it's not on his end, right? (laughs) It's in what I'm believing about me. And I got to stand in this until my identity lines up with what he's told me. When I see myself as an heir with Christ, when I see myself as, as being made righteous, man, then all of a sudden believing for these things by faith becomes a whole lot more realistic. <laughs> Amen? Because scripture tells us, man, we're supposed to be 2 Corinthians 4.18, we are supposed to fix our eyes on not what is seen, but what is unseen. Man, we've been granted every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Everything. Everything we need for life and godliness is in the word, and it's already been given to us. we got to fix our eyes not on what's around us, but what's unseen. Man, and sometimes we don't, we don't feel like a king. We don't look like a king. We don't act like a king. But the word of God says that's who you are. you got to go back to your identity. you got to go back to your identity. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, he probably didn't look like a king. He probably didn't smell like a king. But he acted like a king. Now, when Jesus, before he went out there, the father gave him a word. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I want you to know that's what he's saying over us today. He's saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He's speaking that over you right now. Right now. I want you to receive it by faith. That's the way this thing works. Jesus said, when I come back, am I going to find faith? Because faith is what makes this work. If you don't believe it, you're not going to receive it. Judy, would you come up? All right. Jesus. Mm. All right. Last week, if you were here, the challenge was through the end of, the end of this year, no more, no more negative speaking. No more negative, no more negative speaking about yourself, about your family. When you speak something out that isn't true, you know, when I say, I'm not talking about fact. I'm not talking about fact. You can speak out, you know. Fact is, maybe, maybe my wallet's empty. Truth is, I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing, you know. But I'm, I would never say, this is hypothetical, so don't, don't, you don't need to give me a love offering. I would never say, man, I'm broke. No way, I'm whole. In Jesus' name. I'm not going to confess that lie. Man, I'm blessed. I'm ble- you know what I mean? We gotta, it's, it, 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 remember we talked about the headache thing? This is real simple. If I say, oh, my headache, I just took possession of a headache. 
why would I take a headache? Man, I say, oh, man, I got a pain in my head. Pain, you got to go. You're not mine. In Jesus' name, go, go back to hell where you belong. I'm not, what? Amen, sister. Fine. Fine <laughs> testimony. We love fine testimony. Right. Well, I just, I want to give this testimony because you're talking about the headache and taking possession. And, and I have a real tangible, physical example for you. So this morning, I burnt my hand, hmm. my whole hand, from my pinky all the way across my fingers, I burnt my hand, grabbed something hot, not thinking, and uh, burnt my hand. And I didn't even tell you about it. So I immediately refused to receive burn. Mm. And I just reject. And you know what? I was in a lot of pain for probably a couple hours. Showering was very painful this morning. But I kept rejecting. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to be burned. I don't care. Maybe in the physical I got burned. But I'm not going to receive it and accept it and take ownership of it. Amen. And so I practiced that this morning quite a bit through a couple of hours <laughs> of pain. And I just checked Hallelujah. it just now. And it doesn't hurt. Not at all. And you can't even tell. Like, there's no wow. red spots. Nothing Amen. on my hand. Wow. Amen. So. Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. That was awesome. You know, that's what we're talking about. You know, whether it's, whether it's physical, emotional, whatever need you have. The Lord's already provided it for you. He's already, he provided the solution before the problem ever existed. Jesus was a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. And, 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 and he has chosen you in him. So let's just receive it by faith today. Let's receive it. Let's stand and believe it. Let's stand. Let's stand. That's what we're going to do. <clears throat> I, want you to, I want you to confess who you are. All right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a scripture to you, and I want you to come into agreement with us. With, when I, when I said, <laughs> that's funny. I said with us. I mean, me and Jesus. You got to come into agreement. You got to come into agreement with us on this one. All right. Here we go. Hallelujah. I'm gonna read <clears throat> Galatians 3:26. <laughs> this is really simple. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Just repeat after me. I. I'm a son of God through faith in Christ Jesus. 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that he did not, because it did not know him. So I want you to say this. 1 John 3, 1 says, you are a child. I say, I am a child of God. I am a, a child, child of, of God. God. I am a child of God. Say it till you believe it. <laughs> Say it till you believe it. You got to believe this stuff. You know, and, and some, I remember when I, the first time I said some of this stuff out loud, it sounded like I didn't believe it. And it was because I didn't. Who was wrong? Me or the word? I was. I had to get corrected through God's word. That's how he corrects us. He's through his word. We got we to gotta come into agreement with this. All right. 1 Peter 1 23 this is this is what God is saying about you right now he says you are born again and not of corruptible seed but with incorruptible seed which liveth and abideth forever you've been born again by the incorruptible seed of God I want you to confess say I am born again by the incorruptible seed of God I am God's child and I receive it by faith in Jesus name all right, let's worship. Let's worship. If you need prayer for anything, if you need a miracle, if you need breakthrough, the altar is open today. But when you come, when you come, when you come before the Lord, you come as a child of God, not as a beggar, not as a pauper, not as a slave, not as a servant, but as his child. And if you need a remembrance, read John 17 again. Okay? You come before you boldly come before the throne of grace. You boldly step in there. That's your father. Amen. Amen.